Good evening and welcome. We're coming to you from day two of the Fiji Symposium in Bangalore, the platform for all talks on financial inclusion. And with me is the former Minister of Telecommunications Somalia, Mr. Mohamad Ibrahim. Welcome, sir, and welcome to the Fiji Symposium. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tell us, this is the first Fiji Symposium. How does it feel to be part of it? Uh, it's very exciting. I'm, I'm very happy to be part of this. Um, first of all, I want to thank the Indian government and the ITU to get this opportunity to participate in this. But it is exciting times. Yeah, there are a lot of ideas, a lot of cutting edge stuff. Yeah, and a good future coming up, hopefully. That, that's uh, what we hope. I, I think there will be a lot of good outcomes from this. Yeah. That's true. Uh, could you tell us more about the potential of digital financial services to increase financial inclusion? I think this has been going on for a while, and I'm on the record a few other times that it's not really going back. This is the way forward, especially for the financially excluded people, uh, because nowadays you can provide mobile phone or you can get access to a mobile phone, and all of a sudden you have your own bank in your hand, uh, provided all the rules and regulations are also working. So my interest is a little bit beyond the technology. It's really what you can do with it, uh, especially from my country, Somalia, where mobile money is widely used. Yeah. Uh, my interest is, how do you regulate? How do you make sure that if something goes wrong, then there's a way of going back and, and correcting the system? So yes, we're all excited about the technology, but my interest, if I sit back and look the whole process, is how do you also ensure the citizen, the customer, the client is also looked after? And uh, what would you think the few factors are for, say, people below poverty line to actually embrace digital financial services over the traditional methods of cash and banking? You see, the, the, when we talk about the, the people who are not included in the financial services, yeah. there are different levels. Uh, there, there are poor people and there are really poor people. Correct. So when I talk about this issue in academic uh, environments, I always emphasize really the poor, the real poor cannot even afford mobile phone. Right. We have to be honest about this. I know you have the future phones here which are 300 uh, rubies or whatever, but in some countries that's not available. But let's be positive and think the way ahead where this technology will be available and it will become cheaper. In that case then yes, by no means it will help lots of people who cannot now afford to have bank accounts. And that will also help the, the whole economy in terms of the national developments because people can trade more, they can get involved in the economy. A lot of people who are not now part of the economic systems will then come as a part of the community and they will contribute. Okay. And what according to you is the way forward for digital financial services to be widely used? I think the first thing to me, the way I look at it is it's a cost issue. Uh, the technology is around. Uh, there's no argument about the technology and its availability and, and widely used and so on. But the, the issue that's delaying in the implementation of this in some areas it's the cost involved. In some areas, you probably need a smartphone if you really want to utilize all the functionalities. Some people can't even afford that. Now, in some countries, my concern is even the rules and regulations are not there yet. So I can even use my own country, okay. where the telecos went ahead and they provide uh, mobile money. On the other hand, there should be a line where the people who are providing the mobile money, they're not the Reserve Bank or the Central Bank or the Minister of Finance. So you need to be careful and say, look, who's actually running the show? Who's actually providing this? In India and other countries, the rules are very straightforward. Banks are banks, telecos are telecos, and the laws are there, and everything is safeguarded. So that's another area I'm interested to learn how India and other countries manage to cope with this and solve this problem. Therefore, the experience we gain here, we can take it back to Somalia, and hopefully we can learn from that. Hopefully we can on that note. Thank you so much for being part of this.